Hello all. All right, a rainy, wet day today, so we're inside. But let's go over to the board and take a look at how the heat wave, the world heat wave, is happening right now. Let's go take a, a quick glance at the heat wave of 2020. Seasonal extremes, a strong and compact polar vortex. Let's go take a look at the map. As we can see, the polar vortex is very tight. In fact, it's so tight, it's one of the four strongest polar vortexes we've ever seen in compactness. So as you can see here, this, the, the map you just saw had a little thing here. This is the polar vortex. And then this is when it, our jet stream goes way wild when the polar vor vortex is wild. You know, it's wandering all over the place. But right now we're on the fourth strongest since 1950. Let's go look at the sea ice extent. As you see, we're at the low end. We're still at the low end. We haven't picked up any positive, really. Though it is forecast to get a little bit better than it is now in the next month or so. The uh, heat wave continues, and of course it has profound implications on our future weather. However, this is expected to loosen up a little bit and will cause the moisture to come back into the U.S. area where it has been very dry and very unwinter-like. Winter is expected to show up in about a week or so. I don't know about that. It's getting pretty late here in California. We're on the very last month of heavy rain and we still haven't gotten any heavy rain yet and none in the forecast. Let's go look at something else, something so hideous that the corporations have been hiding from us since the 1940s and it's just now becoming pretty clear about the implications of what they've done behind our backs. The industrial complex are they really bringing good things to life? Okay, this is a bad one. This is bad news for all of us all around the world because these chemicals, well, let's just start. All U.S. water is contaminated with PFASs, toxic chemicals known as pre-polyurolaca or PFASs. That's easier to say. PFASs have been highly utilized in various industries. It's been made since the 1940s. They repel oil and water excellently. Found in Teflon and other non-stick stains, wood stains and other stains, paints, repellents, cleaning products, and firefighting foam, along with and additionally to food package wrappings. In other words, the packaging that your food comes in. PFASs are known as forever chemicals. The reason they're known as forever chemicals is their makeup. They don't break down in the environment or somebody's body at all. They, they take thousands, millions, or even billions of years to break down. These chemicals include PFOSs, PFOAs, and Gen X, G-E-N-X. These elemental bonds of fluorine and carbon are extremely strong. The health effects, liver damage, thyroid damage, thyroid disease, high cholesterol, obesity, hormonal suppression, and all kinds of cancers. How toxic are these chemicals? You should limit your exposure to just 0 0.07 parts per billion in drinking water. So here in the US, scientists are saying we need to do something about these exposures 
because that might be why we're seeing so many increases in cancers and obesity and all the hormone problems that we're seeing with people shooting people maybe that has something to do with it the exposure to all these horrible chemicals has to stop or has to be treated at the source can't be allowed in the waterways of our planet if you're using non-stick cookware meh get rid of it make sure that it's coated with something so it can't get in the environment over time so the scientists are saying it's time for some new regulation and some new uh, work done on our our plants to stop this chemical from getting in the, into the environment but the orange man he's doing just the opposite he's deregulating water the clean water act so far that it's beyond it's down into the 1960s now and exposure to this kind of thing is going to become more and more as we ramp up plastic production did i say pla some plastics have this chemical in it and the, the plastic ends up in the ocean and it breaks down those chemicals leach out of the plastic or leach into the plastic then the animals eat the plastic and they become contaminated then we eat those animals and then we become contaminated that's why you should not be eating fish from any ocean lake or river you should be only eating plant-based diets less exposure that way Make sure that your pots and pans are maybe lined with something like stainless steel with a little bit of aluminum and copper on the outside. Best pan you ever cooked with. You only have to buy it once in your whole lifetime. You're not having to buy a pan every year or so because the Teflon pieces rubbed off of the aluminum and got into the waterways, which then go directly into our streams and wetlands and our lakes contaminating us so all of us are now contaminated here in the u.s everyone who's been tested is found to have over the safe limits of 0 0.07 parts per billion we're way past that that might explain maybe some of our problems that we're having so i just wanted to put that out there because it's very important that we do not eat or use chemicals that we have no idea what we're doing with. The less chemicals that you use in your everyday life, the better it is for our planet. The, the best cleaning products are the ones in your health food stores and alternative plant-based stores. You'll find cleaning products without these chemicals in there. And it's a lot better for your exposure as well. As far as what you drink, water's in everything that you drink you're exposed. I would suggest you do everything to stop the deregulation of the, the chemicals that go into our water supply. You hear that orange supporters? Get your man to regulate, not deregulate.